All right, so for this video, uh, I've reloaded up some 68 grain uh, boat tail hollow points um, to kind of uh, continue uh, on with, with this little video series here. But uh, through the course of, of reloading this, I've, I've kind of made some clips about, uh, you know, some things I've learned, uh, some things I've, I've seen, and, and, you know, I think some things that's worth sharing with others uh, who may be, you know, starting to reload uh, for an AR uh, type platform. So uh, I'll review some of the kinetic energy um, and uh, ballistic data for the 55 grain versus the 68 grain also. Kind of uh, go through uh, why, you know, I want to I want to kind of gravitate towards uh, using these 68s. But uh, just a quick uh, couple clips uh, together. Uh, we'll probably end with, uh, you know, we'll end with, with going to the range here uh, to see how these guys do. So I'll review all that. So to explain the chart, right, the y-axis is kinetic energy in foot-pounds. The, the x-axis is distance in yards. Now, it has both 55 and 68 grain uh, um, kinetic energy plots here. Now, the 55 uh, grain uh, tops out in the manual, right? at 3,000 feet per second. So for that bullet, I used 3,000, 2,900, and 2,800 feet per second for the three, you know, test cases here. And then for the 68 grain, it tops out at 2,900 in the book. So I used 2,900, 2,800, 2,700 for that one uh, and, put, and just plotted the data, right? So there's a 100 feet per second difference at max there. Um, but you can see on the chart, uh, the kinetic energy difference is, is a pretty big deal. So um, all three uh, of the bottom uh, curves is the 55 grain. Uh, so the 68 grain, uh, you know, delivers a lot harder punch uh, at, you know, downrange here at 250 yards, um, which makes sense. Yeah, the 68 grain is heavier. So uh, even with 100 uh, feet per second difference, it's not that huge. Um, but in terms of kinetic energy, Pretty big difference. The uh, the 3,000 feet per second 55 grain V max delivers about 550 foot pounds. Um, the uh, 68 grain going 2,900 feet per second is uh, 760 760 foot pounds. So significantly different, which is exactly why I'm interested in it. Um, and I think that makes sense to most people. It's intuitive, right? So what might not be as obvious is um, well, basically which one shoots flatter. So here's the, here's a second chart. And I, this one is just set up to explain, um, you know, and I have the Y axis label here as holdover in MOA. Uh, so if something's at 250 yards, how much, how many MOA do you have to hold over the target, um, to, to make that shot? Uh, same thing, uh, X axis is zero to 250 yards. So when you plot this out, Right, same setup, 68 grain uh, maxed out at 2,900, 55 grain maxed out at, at 3,000, right? It might make sense that the 55 would shoot flatter when, you know, in fact, it does not, okay? So the 68 grain outperforms or just edges out that 55 grain VMAX. All right, so with that being said, you know, I think the... Uh, the holdover part of this, which is shooting flatter versus, you know, one versus the other is not, uh, is not, it's not significantly different between the two, but the difference in the kinetic energy, um, is so, uh, that's why uh, I'm looking at this bullet. So, all right, so here we are loaded up, ready to go. Uh, just to kind of review you know, what we got here. We've got, uh, 68 grain, uh, boat tail hollow points, uh, Loaded up with Varget. Um, starting loads are at 24 grains uh, and increasing to 24.9 uh, by 0.25 uh, grain increments. So, take these guys to the range uh, and see uh, what we get. Uh, oh, everything will be chronographed uh, and we'll measure the uh, you know three shot groups. See how it does. All right, here we are at the range. Um, Going to do some testing today with the AR-15. Uh, try to see what these 68 grain uh, boat tail hull points are going to do. It's a really low wind day. 
Uh, it's about 40, and it's pretty uh, pretty nice out here. So, see so what we get. Not bad, not bad at all. I jerked that last one. That's a bit of a bummer. Take it though. All right, back from the range. I just got back uh, shooting this AR-15. Uh, and again, we were working on, uh, or I was working on 68 grain uh, boat tail hollow points for an AR-15. Uh, all the loads, all the charges are Varget. Right, so starting with 24 grains and increasing in 0.25 grain increments all the way up to 24.9, which is the recommended max in the book. So it's a very tight, um, you know, basically load series here. Uh, we're less than one grain uh, of powder between these guys. So um, just to kind of review the group sizes, right? So we got a 0.203. This is right out of the uh, right out of the the uh, gate here cold bore you know i usually wait uh right around a minute between shots kind of thing pretty good pretty happy with that uh from there we go to a 0 0.66 we got uh 0.95 a 0.9 a 0.39 one thing i will say uh i don't really complain uh, about pulling shots because i mean everybody does it it happens uh this is a pulled shot so I think this group could be even better, but I'm not really complaining. I'm not too worried about it because it's less than a half an inch. So fine with that. If we look at the numbers here uh, on the chart, so the velocity averages and range chart. Uh, velocity numbers, uh, the velocity curve is the blue one, the range or the extreme spread, which is the, you know, uh, basically the range of velocities within each three-shot group, okay? Um is the red curve uh, velocity again we're really we're really tight uh, in terms of charge weight of the powder right of the varget uh, so we're not going to see a flat spot on this one um, we're basically in a 2700 2750 node here so um, not a lot of difference there the ranges or extreme spreads are kind of bounced around between 40 and 55, which is, I mean, it is what it is. It's nice and flat. Nothing really stands out there. Um, velocity averages and group sizes at 100. I mean, everything's under, uh, again, group size is the red uh, curve on here. Um, everything's under an inch. You know, the best group is 0.2, uh, and the last, the first, which is the first group, the second group is about double that, 0.4, right? So, nothing to complain about. Um, um, I am a little bit, uh, it's unfortunate, you know, just my opinion here, but it's, it's a little bit unfortunate that the uh, first group and the last group uh, are the best uh, groups here. Um, I'm a little hesitant to ever try to use a 24, you know, a max load uh, in the field. Um, just because, well, honestly, it was 40 degrees today. I have been out uh, in the field where it's been, you know, less than zero. So that's going to change the pressure on the on this guy. And we're already at max, recommended max. So we kind of have to be careful uh, with that. I know Varget is an extreme powder, but it's still going to have an, an effect. Um what I think I'm going to do here is I'm going to do an exact uh, repeat of this 
the whole thing. And I might even put my 24 power uh, target scope on the gun just to kind of take a little bit more of the user error out because I'm just doing this with a 12 power scope, uh, which is pretty good. But, uh, you know, I could use all the help I can get. So stay tuned. Uh, these boat tail hollow points are pretty nice. I'm pretty impressed. I'm pretty happy with this overall, um, you know, result. So stay tuned.